Hello, welcome to a what I eat in a week video. This is going to be lunches and dinners Monday through Friday, and the recipes for everything will be linked in the description. Hope you enjoy! So for lunch on Monday, we are going super basic with the salmon avocado bowl. So we're starting by seasoning our salmon and preheating the pan and we make sure the oil's hot and then lay that salmon down nice and slowly and I forgot to hold it so the skin kind of curled up a little bit but it's fine. Um, I remembered to do it for the second piece which is good. So after waiting for the salmon to cook halfway, I just give it a flip. And after a while, I use a food thermometer to check the temperature, and that one was really cold. We're aiming for like 115, 120 for salmon, so the smaller piece finished cooking faster, so I took that out and uh, wanted to have some fun with the plating here. Also, the rice was really warm, so totally effective hand warmer. So I have the salmon on the plate and then add some avocado chunks and sriracha. Uh, the bottle was not cooperating with me, but there's the sriracha, and then we're adding the kewpie mayo. And on top of the rice, I'm adding some soy sauce and sesame oil, and I love watching the sesame oil seep in through the mound. I don't know why that's so satisfying. And then also I'm adding fiery kake, uh, which is some rice seasoning to give it some extra crunch. And yep, that's it. Also, the plating is like kind of pointless because when you eat it, you just mix everything together anyway. But yeah, this is really fun to make and it's super easy and literally it tastes so good. Like if you haven't tried it yet, like where where have you been? So moving on to dinner, I'm making a salad. I am chopping up some cucumbers and tomatoes. Flavor bombs are the best tomatoes and slicing some red onions super thin and literally this onion has lasted so long so I put the rest in the fridge and I'm using romaine lettuce just give that a nice little chop so the salad also has feta cheese and yes the salad okay I don't know what I'm doing and then I added some Italian vinaigrette and gave it a little mix and then decided it needed more dressing so I just added some more and the salad the salad is done so the main course is burgers, so I'm making smash burgers, I am taking that spatula and pressing down and literally using a wooden rolling pin to help me press the burgers down. And after I flatten it, I add salt and pepper. And then I just flip the patty and at this point it is ready for cheese, so I add a slice of cheese and cover the pan so the cheese can melt. And the cheese is looking really nice and melty, so I take that patty out and repeat this for the other burgers. So to assemble the burgers, we are putting pickles on some toasty buns, and after that, some lettuce because we love vegetables, and then the patty goes right on top, and topping that with some red onion, and then I added ketchup and horseradish sauce to my burger. I crown my king by, yeah, that's how I usually spread the sauce, I just kind of rub the top around and the burger looks great. And I'm having the salad that I made earlier on the side, and to drink, I'm trying the classic root beer Olipop flavor. That was pretty good. I would recommend it. Cheers! This is a sauce intermission, so I'm making gochujang mayo. Um, I only needed a little bit, so what I did was just put some mayo in this little container and then I take a super small whisk and just like, yeah, you saw how it just got however much the whisk stuck to and it was super easy to mix this together and this works really well unless your gochujang is really old and dry. So that was the sauce and it is going on these bagel sandwiches. So there's cream cheese and egg and avocado and then the gochujang mayo, which is so good. Like it's not spicy. Um, it just adds really nice flavor. So yes. Now we are ready to crown our kings and cut it for a nice cross section, hopefully. Yes, that's, that's pretty good. So this is another intermission. Um, this is a produce haul from the rounds. Yeah, so we got kale. I was like, I, do I even like kale? But it's fine. And then these super fat green onions. Like, I don't know why they were so fat, but the kale looked really good and I was really excited to get that and figure out what to do with it. 
Um, and then we got a bunch of apples. Apples are always really nice. And then we got purple daikon and I was like, uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, but that's cool. And then a bunch of onions. So this was a pretty good haul, I think. Yes, I freaked out the camera. Oh, and I also got this oat milk and this is what I use in my matcha lattes and it tastes really good. I also got coconut water. Um, that's the full haul. And I did not mean to get 12 coconut water. That, that was an accident, but it's fine. I will drink it all. So, okay, we are already moving on to dinner. Um, here I am peeling and cutting some shallots. See if you can guess what I'm making before I get to the actual thing. Ha, uh, it's like a fun little game. Okay, um, cutting shallots and also cutting this yellow bell pepper. So I'm measuring out the amount of butternut squash that I need for this recipe, which was about, I whatever the scale says, I don't remember anymore, but yes. We are starting with shallots and oil in the pan and stirring that up a little bit before adding the yellow bell pepper and then stirring that up too and the step always satisfies me and then i'm adding the butternut squash and because i do not keep ginger using minced ginger instead of fresh ginger uh it's fine did you guess it right i was making thai curry Woo. okay i don't know what i'm saying okay i added two scoops of the curry paste and this was like really difficult to stir <laughs> And then adding a can of coconut milk and I don't know what's up with the Trader Joe's coconut milk that is like extremely separated like that, like the solid parts were staying on top, but it's cool. I just stirred it all together and then I think the next step, yep, we just put the lid on and let that simmer until the butternut squash is fully cooked. So after some time, I checked just to make sure that the squash was fully cooked by seeing if I could easily get my fork through it and that looked really good so it's done and then I had to do a little taste test for salt before dumping in a whole bag of spinach and hoping that it would shrink because spinach always disappears and I covered it for a few minutes and the spinach shrunk really easily and I really like the colors of this like it's so pretty so the recipe suggested either crushed peanuts or cashews to go along with it. Um, I used peanuts, but I think cashews would have been better, and I squeezed some lime on top, but I don't think that did anything. Um, and this was my attempt at plating it, but this turned out like surprisingly good. This was my first time trying this recipe. On Wednesday, I got kava for lunch. Yeah, and then for dinner, um, this is a kale salad using the kale that I got from the rounds. Um, I'm making it again later, so wait. And then this is butternut squash mac and cheese from Justine Snacks. It is so cheesy. Like, if you make this, probably less cheese, but it's still really good as is. Okay, and I can't believe it took me until Thursday to make a matcha latte, but here is the latte. Um, I know that matcha color is looking a little sus, but I left that in the fridge for like a day. So it's looking a little not bright green, but yeah. Um, I heated up leftover Thai curry for lunch and that's it. For dinner, my friend cooked this pasta and that is goat cheese on top and honestly game changer. I never thought of that, it was delicious. And yes, it was her birthday, so Here's a little birthday cake shot. So here are the deets on the matcha. I use Junbi matcha and I use a teaspoon of matcha and sweeten it with a little more than a teaspoon of sugar because the oat milk is already kind of sweet. So I add hot but not boiling water and then whisk it to make it nice and frothy. And it's so beautiful. Like look at all those gorgeous bubbles and then I'm having it iced. So I add a couple of ice cubes and then top it off with the oat milk. And that's the color it should be, like a really gorgeous bright green. So for lunch, I'm harvesting the kale from my fridge. Um, I This is like my first time using kale, honestly. Like I never buy it because I thought I didn't like it, but it's cool. This recipe actually changed my mind. So I w washed off the kale and then 
you have to spin it because literally i don't know how so much water like gets on the leaves like this that that's crazy so after drying off the leaves i'm putting it back in this bowl and no leaf left behind and i added avocados the day before but that was the only avocado we had so i'm slicing up apples instead and this is the dressing that i will link in the description it's supposed to be an era one or whatever that place is called copycat so the salad i am adding my apples back in and then white beans literally just for texture they taste like nothing and then some butternut squash seeds that i roasted because gotta use the whole squash and then i just mix it up and the salad is done so this is kind of a sad story um we're making meatball subs and literally got like we finished we finished making the meatball subs and then discovered that other bread where we got the bread was moldy so we threw it away because i'm super paranoid about mold spreading through bread so we threw it away and then um ordered meatball subs from a sandwich shop because we both still really wanted to eat it so the moldy bread cost us 26 dollars which was an l but the meatball subs that we got were really delicious and on the plus side we found the crisp apple olipop flavor which is amazing the end <laughs>